G'day folks. I was just having a bit of a rummage around through the electric motors at the junkyard and I found there's actually a few different motors which had all been uh, taken out of service for various reasons and were simply still looked good. Like this one here has had very little use on it and you can just see one of the terminal screws is, or studs has broken off and uh, arced out to the housing there. There's a little arc burn and whatnot from when it snapped off and uh, it looks like they've canned it because of that because the bearings and everything in it are fine it doesn't smell burnt I'm going to get the multimeter out and test it but overall this should be a pretty good motor uh, it's made by VEG I don't know, yeah, it might be made in, yeah it's made in Brazil I think they make them all in Brazil but you can see, as you can see 3 kilowatts 220 volt delta or 380 volt star all the way up to 440 volt 3.6 kilowatts um, 60, at 60 hertz so we're only running on 50 hertz so this is only a 3 kilowatt motor but 440 or 460 60 hertz in star will be 3.6 kilowatts um, and when I say star and delta I mean how the windings intersect with each other this is in star at the moment where your phase is going 1, 2 and 3 and the other sides of the windings are all intersected with these um, bridging strips and in a hermetic refrigerant compressor that's usually the Clixon device a thermal overheat that's actually taped and varnished into the windings and it's permanently attached like that you can't just open it up and change it um, I mean once you've ripped it out if you've cut the compressor open you could probably change it to Delta but you can't once the um, the compressor is sealed up whereas in the motors like this they give you the option of changing it so I have to take these bridging plates off and bridge across, across and probably just have this one screwed on here there's nothing connected underneath, they're just studs in a flame proof plastic block so yeah it should be pretty easy but first I'm going to get the meter onto it and see if it was worth the 25 bucks if not I could probably just sell it back as scrap and make most of my money back he gave it to me for less than what he'd get as scrap value because I've been doing a lot of good business lately and uh, yeah they look after me it's had a bit of a ding in the back end but we can fix that up it the fan hasn't hit the housing and I don't know why it's got the extra thick rear end bell either normally it's just that with a regular style end bell so this might be a special purpose motor also it's one of the, it's the first time I've seen one in person that's in green I think the green ones are supposed to be an eco-friendly um, VFD suitable motor like specifically wound and varnished for use with variable frequency drives which have a habit of being a bit harsh on some old motor windings and things like the really early motors you'll find that you can break down the windings through the, the resonant the operating frequency uh, resonations and vibration through the windings from the varying frequency you'll get to harmonic points where the windings just start vibrating ever so slightly and uh, yeah it can destroy it can destroy weaker motors and that's why they make specifically um, VFD approved motors so I'll look up this code on the web before I uh, go ahead with anything else just to see what we're dealing with but I'm pretty sure this is one of the newer Ecoline motors for um, variable frequency drives okay well the closest I've found to this one that I have is the uh, brake motor which has a automatic brake built into it now this one doesn't appear to have that so I'm guessing it's a variant on the brake motor frame which is the EFFE2 um, premium efficiency motor but this one also has a cast iron housing not the aluminum frame that they're claiming here so I might have the wrong drawing but I can't find a specific match to any of the numbers on that motor so it must be a hybrid that they've built custom for somebody uh, it seems a bit odd that they just can't because of a buggered terminal though if that's the case um, I don't know maybe Veg Australia put put them together here after but after the components are manufactured in Brazil and they build them to order which would be a lot cheaper than getting it made in Brazil specifically and then sent over so I don't know there might be more details coming out about this I'll have a bit more of a look later but for now I want to ohm it and find out if it's all right and then um, yeah put it across the put the VFD across it and spin it up okay well I guess I should really carry a multimeter in my car when I go shopping for motors because um, unfortunately this one's gone to ground I was testing everything else and then I tested the ground and well it's not very happy so it doesn't smell burnt but I'm going to open it up what I think has happened is because this leads broken off and grounded out or maybe not even grounded out it's just broken off and sat there um, I suppose once it's broken this lug wouldn't have been in contact with the uh, power, power cable 
So I'm guessing it's been sitting on, running on two phases instead of three, and it's just overheated and cooked it. So I'll give it a, yeah, have a look at it, pop it open, see if anything's blatantly obvious. Uh, if it's not just a collapsed wire lead or connection or something like that, well, this will probably be an autopsy. Other, other than that, it's basically just a big paperweight. Bit of a shame they're up. They are a good high efficiency motor. I was hoping to use this on the lathe. Oh well, can't win them all, and I think I've got already got more than enough motors. <laughs> Last thing I need is more motors. Oh well, I'll find more motors. Okay, well it's not all completely burnt up, but I'd say more than likely this was a victim of a phase or phase loss, I suppose, dropping a phase. Uh, the terminal must have broken off inside the um, the box, and then. Uh, she tried to run on two phases, maybe even stall, and just sat there burning. Uh, the rust's from sitting outside with the cover off, that's not part of the failure. But you can see certain burnt spots where the rotor's been sitting stationary, and it just sat there burning. So yeah, it's not a happy motor. It's probably worse down the back, I'm not going to bother taking the rest of it apart. It's no real point, I'm going to put it back together again actually. And uh, get, some more, get some of my money back. Oh well, it's not the first time I've paid good money for something to autopsy. I do it all the time. <laughs> like cars and things, the day where I paid 250 bucks for because um, it belonged to my supervisor. So I took care of her with that sort of thing and yeah. I'm not going to make that kind of money back on it, but at least we can try and have some fun videos and things in the process. So I don't consider this a waste of money, I consider it a learning exercise. Biggest lesson to be learned, carry a multimeter. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a spare multimeter, I'll chuck that in the car. Actually both cars, I've got two multimeters, two cars. Yeah, she's crispy though, crispified motor. Doesn't smell too bad, but it's definitely burnt. You can see where the mylar strips have started to ooze through the uh, slots. Yeah, it's a shame. Nice long rotor means lots of torque. This thing would be pretty gutsy. And there's definitely no break in there, it's just a hollow space, but the stator sticks out a bit into it, so that's why they've got the ex extended bell housing on it. Anyway, interesting little exercise. Thanks for watching.